Hello, investors and traders, and welcome to the Weekly Market Report. I'm A.J. Monty, and this is a one-year daily candle chart of the diamonds. This is the Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF, and the markets are about to close in about three minutes. I'm recording this in the last minutes of the trading day because I want to show everyone what the close looks like right here. We've had some pressure on the market since 12 noon. And as I zoom in here in the last minute, you see this shooting star right there. This is a minute by minute chart and we're not far from lows right here. So the momentum is still lower on the close. And as you can see, this green dotted line was my target price. I've had in place for a couple of weeks. Now we finally hit that. And now that we've hit that target, let me erase all lines and show you what's happening right here on this candle. That is a bearish engulfing candle, and we have that bearish engulfing candle showing up on higher red volume down there. Now, when you have the candle like that on higher volume, the oscillators take a back seat to the price action and volume. So next week, I do believe that we're going to go lower. Overall, we have a shortened trading week next week. I'm going to extend this out just a little bit here because I think we're on our way to the downside to fill that open gap that's still down at this level right there. So I'm going to put my target right there at 306.09 for the diamonds. And then now let's go look at IWM. If you look at this, we have, again, just about a minute left. We have a big red candle right there. We did hit the target that I've had set in place. The volume isn't as high as what we've seen on the diamonds, but I do believe that next week we are going to go lower with the rest of the markets. You can see that the moving average above here is starting to turn lower. And what that means is that as the moving average curves down like that, it's going to act as resistance. So keep your seatbelts on. I think we're going lower. Let me just put a target down here. I think we're going to go all the way down to test. There it is. Market's closed. I think we're going all the way down to test those lows right there at 168.38 for IWM. So I'm just going to draw a zip line out by a couple of weeks and September is going to be very interesting. So folks, this is not a market to be messing around with with any long positions. I know it's very tempting to take your cash available and go buy something when the markets are down, but September and October are absolutely notorious for being down months. And I think we're just getting heated up into this bear market. I'm going to go and look at the the phases as we progress here but let me take a look at SPY you can see again we hit my targets bearish engulfing candle higher volume let me erase all these lines right now you can see the moving averages are rolling over right there we have a gap down below the market here so let me put that in a dotted line for you so we can keep that in place that's an open gap that I do believe is going to fill it's not going to fill next week mind you I think we're going to go down, might rally towards the end of next week, then options expiration week comes the week after that, and I think we're going to start moving lower, more or less in a zigzag pattern, ABCD pattern. But I'm going to put this one out as a price target down below at 379.55. Notice that's going to be towards the middle of September, right there, middle of September. Now, if I look at the weekly chart, I'm going to show you something here. This is a very well pronounced pivot point here. And if I go and look at the monthly chart, remember what I was talking about, phase one, phase two, phase three. Now that we're in September, we have a much lower high. We have a lower low. I do believe that September is going to keep moving lower. Therefore, we have the end of phase one in that bear market. Phase one is a bounce and then a pivot. And then the continuation into phase two is going to look almost identical to phase one, where we'll break out through the June lows, rally back up to the June lows, and then we start to pivot and move into phase three. This is not going to happen overnight. It's going to be a progression 
of moves up and down, which we call trading legs. So be prepared for that. Option traders are basically in option heaven right now as volatility starts to increase. The premiums that option traders are trading are getting pretty beefed up now. And with that, let me take a look at the VIX. So you can see this is something you don't see all that often. This morning, the VIX candle was all red. Then it rallied back. It is green. I do believe the VIX is going to continue to rally. I have this upside target in place for the VIX at 28.61. That is still in place. This is very close to a hammer. It's more like a doji, but that long shadow underneath that VIX tells me, watch out, the volatility is getting ready to pop. Okay, so that's for the VIX. Now, finally, if we look at the Qs, ticker symbol QQQ, you'll see this is basically the tech sector. Hit my targets again, and we have that bearish engulfing candle, volume increasing on the way down, and there is still an open gap below the market. So again, what I'm going to do is draw my lines to fill that gap. My target is going to be at that gap fill right there. Let me draw my speed line for you so we can get a little bit of a time reference there. I think we're going to move down just like that. Downside target for the Qs is 287.83. Notice on the bottom right hand corner of that data box, that brings us to about September 14th. Now, again, we might see a little bit of a rally towards the end of next week, but then the week after that, I think they're going to make the, the another push to the downside. You have this moving average again rolling over, and then as that moving average goes lower, that too will act as a resistance point. Now, as of late, I've been telling people to keep an eye on what's happening in the geopolitical world. What's going on around them is most definitely going to affect the markets. And last week I made an error in posting a chart. It was the bank repo. It was not for repossessions. One of our viewers pointed that out when I double checked. That was absolutely correct. What I was getting at is that the car repossessions are exploding right now. This is from Barron's to give you a reference. I couldn't find the chart that went along with this one, but here's the article. You could hit pause and read the, the caption here. But this is not a good sign for our economy, nor is the amount of debt that people are taking on for auto loans and leases and such. We're hitting record levels for loans, which means people are leveraged in a recession. Not good. If you look at what's happening with mortgage rates, now this is the change year over year in the mortgage rates. And look where we are now. Comparing that to what we saw in 2008 or prior to 2008 and prior to the crash of 2000, we are way ahead of what we had back in those bear markets. And that's going to make this a lot more severe when the bubble finally bursts. Now, looking at this chart, this is pretty scary, actually, because U.S. mortgage lenders are starting to go bankrupt. And if you talk to anyone who's in the real estate market in California, especially the lenders are now almost getting desperate to push money out into the market where they're making loans that are basically no money down. You could go borrow money. Credit checks are becoming very lenient. And that is exactly what we saw in 2008. And so these are signs that are just stacking up one after the next. And what I did here is I took a snapshot of this chart. This is more or less an overlay of where we are, current markets being in blue, as compared to what the S&P was looking like prior to the crash of 2008. And this is almost a mirror image of what we saw back in 2008. I do believe that we are going to take out those June lows, and then we're going to bounce, and then phase three comes in. Just like 2008, we had that capitulation towards the end of that year. I think this bear market is going to take a little bit longer to hit that capitulation stage, and I do believe that the bear market is going to last a lot longer than what we saw in 2008. I'm saying minimum three years. We're only nine months into this bear market right now. I think we're going to see a minimum of three years, possibly five years of a down market. 
And the, again, the signals are backing this up. Remember what I was saying about fuel? This is the only bull market that I'm really interested in right now. And diesel fuel is starting to uptick right now. That will contribute to the overall inflationary picture, especially as truckers are battling to make that buck. And it's harder and harder for them, especially as fuel costs go up. And we're seeing fuel costs having an impact on the global economies, not just in the U.S., and you can see that the headlines are getting pretty ominous as you look at Market Watch and some of the other headlines. You see a lot more analysts talking about downside potential, super bubbles, bubbles, right? We, I was explaining to you what a bear market rally was. We, we came out of that from the lows in June. We had that bear market rally, and now we have the pivot point lower. Again, ending phase one of that bear market phase. And now we're getting into phase two, which is most likely going to be more intense than phase one. This is extremely interesting because, you know, no sooner does California come out and announcing their plan to get rid of all of the cars that use gas and moving everyone to EV. Now they have a heat wave out there and they're talking about people, you know, asking people to avoid using large appliances and charging your electric vehicles. It's kind of ironic there. But that's what's happening in California. We have a heat wave going on right now in Florida. It's not going to be as severe as what we see in other parts of the country, but it does take its toll on the grid. It does take its toll in producing energy. It becomes more expensive. It overloads the systems. We get blackouts and such, and that could put a crimp in our economy as well. Now, with regard to halting trading, we will most likely see this come up in phase three of the bear market or maybe even sooner. We've only seen this a few times in the history of the markets, but I just want to give everyone a heads up that the circuit breakers will trigger when the S&P drops by 7%. When the S&P drops by 7%, New York Stock Exchange is going to halt trading for 15 minutes. Now, if you see that happen, understand that that doesn't mean, okay, we're going to start buying now because they halted the downside of the market. No, in fact, it could be the opposite, where if they halt trading for 15 minutes, it could spook investors, it could push them to take a break from work, take an early lunch, whatever it may be, let's go get the sell orders in because I want to have a problem with my retirement account. So it could actually work against what the circuit breakers were designed to do, which was to calm down or, or slow down the selling pressure. I believe that this time it could magnify that selling pressure and spook the market. So that is what we are seeing right now. Now, this coming Wednesday, I have a special event with Market Rebellion where I'm going to be going over some of my option strategies. That will be free to the public. I'll be putting a link in the description box to Market Rebellion. You can go to marketrebellion.com and enroll in that. Again, it's free. I think you only have to put your email address in there, if I'm not mistaken, but check that. I'm going to be very excited about talking option strategies with our members and people from the general public. This is how we make money in the market right now is spread trading using option contracts. And I'm going to explain that strategy to everyone in that one hour segment with John Nigerian. So again, keep your seatbelts on. It's a very exciting market. It's a very exciting time to be alive. And I will talk to you next time. So long. Hello, John Najarian here. If you want to trade like a rebel, if you want to party like a rebel, well, you got to come to RebelCon 2022. It's going to be in Dallas, Texas at the fabulous Four Seasons Resort. We start the 21st of September, go until September 24th. It will be more fun and more live trading than we've ever done before. That's why it's called RebelCon 2022. We're going to have barbecues and double the amount of live trading. So if you want to book that now, make sure you do because the guest speakers, as soon as we announce those, this thing's going to be sold out. It's going to be something you do not want to miss, limited to 250 people. Diamond, platinum, and gold packages are selling out. Sign up now for RebelCon 2022 at the Four Seasons in Dallas, Texas. Welcome to the Rebellion.